Hello everybody, this is Gary. Today is Sunday, May 10th, 2020. It is 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States, not just in New York. And this is just a quick update with how I'm dealing with my mental health and the coronavirus epidemic. Um, as always, I'm doing pretty good. I have enough money to pay my bills, pay my rent, which I'm grateful for. I know a lot of people, I don't know worse situations than I'm in. I'm kind of tired because I've been sleeping very well. That happens every once in a while. Um, sometimes my medication helps me sleep, sometimes it doesn't. Or if I do fall asleep, I often wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. There's not much chance of getting back to sleep. I try meditation to help me sleep. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of hit and miss. Um, it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Um, the other thing I'm doing is thinking about moving to a different apartment. Right now I'm in a studio and I'm paying $625 a month. I personally think it's kind of steep for a studio apartment. I have no problem with my neighbors, I have no problem with the landlord. I have no problem with the apartment itself other than the cost. The neighborhood is nice. Um, my neighbors are fairly quiet. Um, no one bothers me, um, but the price, $625 for a studio seems kind of steep to me. Um, the apartments that I've been applying for are subsidized housing. That is part of the rent is paid by the government. And I'm not talking about section eight. The section eight waiting list is so long. It could take years before you got anything on section eight. That's not what I'm applying for. Section 8 is a program where they give you money to pay part of your rent from the government and you go out and find a private landlord who's willing to take Section 8 vouchers. Um, like I said, I didn't even bother applying for Section 8. The list is so long that it's closed and it can take years before I, get, I ever got Section 8. It's not a reasonable, realistic goal at all to get Section 8. However, there are other forms of subsidized housing, and I'll use Rochester as an example. There are other examples of um, subsidized housing that have nothing to do with Section 8 or even the Department of Health and Urban Development. HUD does own and control some public housing that's subsidized, but not all of it. Um, there are different agencies in Rochester, New York, that have subsidized housing through various government agencies. There's the Rochester Housing Authority. There's the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which runs subsidized housing in rural areas. And I've applied for some of those places in rural areas. Um, unlike Section 8, when you move into um, subsidized housing, whether it's Rochester Housing Authority, Department of Agriculture, or some other agency, you only get the subsidy if you live on a specific apartment complex grounds. If you move out of that building, you lose your subsidized housing. It's not transferable from one landlord to the next, like Section 8 is. So there is subsidized housing available. Um, most of them have a one-year waiting list, so I'm not moving anytime soon, and I wasn't planning on moving anytime soon. I'm in a lease and I have no intention of breaking that lease. Um, if I apply now, which is May, I may not hear from a, a subsidized apartment complex for another 12 months. So I doubt that I would want to break my lease. Um, I signed the one year lease I have today on April 1st. And so it expires again next year on April 1st. And at that time, I'm going to have to decide whether or not I break my lease, or not break my lease, but just simply move on to another apartment when my lease is up. Um, but I don't think I'm moving anytime soon because, like I said, the subsidized housing, they have long waiting lists, but it is worth the wait because my rent would be much, much lower than $625, and it would be for a one bedroom. Some of the complexes I applied to might have studios, but most of them don't. Most of them have one bedrooms 
or even two and three bedrooms. And different houses have different restrictions. Some housing complexes only take seniors 62 or over. Some only take seniors 55 and over in age. I'm 54, so I'm just below quali below in age qualifying for that kind of um, subsidized housing. Um, and other are a mix and match. Some subsidized housing is for the disabled regardless of age or the elderly over 62 or the elderly over 55 or families who are seeking subsidized housing. So there's a mishmash of different programs out there that I've applied to. But like I said, I don't think, I don't think I have a problem in getting accepted into one of these complexes. I, I think I would pass a, a credit check and a background check and all that criminal background. Background check is something they do when you apply for subsidized housing. Um, so I don't think I would have a problem getting accepted into one of these apartment complexes. It's just going to take a very long time, um, up to a year or more. I suppose it's possible to have it in less than a year, but that's not likely. Um, so and it would be interesting to see what happens with my applications during this uh, coronavirus COVID-19 thing. I don't know if that would increase the demand for subsidized housing or reduce it. Because if people don't have the money, maybe they're not going to apply for a new apartment if they can't even pay the rent for the apartment that they have or the mortgages they already have. Um, it's hard to see uh, the future. Um, so I'm taking one day at a time, sticking to my daily schedule, coping the best way I can. So like, comment, share, subscribe, press the notification bell. Share my videos on social networks. It helps out my channel a lot. And if you have a topic you want me to do for a video, let me know in the comment section.